Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London with another watch video and today we're taking a look at the top three steel sports watches from Rolex. Okay, so we've got our top three. Um, I've kind of split it up into top three lines. So collections, like example, uh, a Yachtmaster or a Datejust collection or line. I've split it up into top three lines and I've selected the top model within each line from Rolex. Um, at the end of the video, we're gonna crown the king of steel sports watches from Rolex, which I'm sure you guys probably will be able to guess who that is already. Uh, but every single watch that we've selected in this video has been chosen because um, of a combination between our, our clients' opinions and, and feelings that we've seen from our clients once they've bought these watches, um, you know, how long they've held on to them for, if they've actually really loved them or not. And also from experience from me owning watches personally and everyone else here at Bijou Diamond Jewelry owning some of these watches personally, what we found uh, with those pieces, um, and also what's doing really well in the market at the moment. So there's lots and lots of factors that have been uh, put into this decision and into making this little lineup. Um, and I'm sure you guys will see all the detail we've got here. Um, just to quickly get to it now as to what lines we're looking at, we're looking at the GMT Master line, the uh, Submariner line, and also the Daytona line. Uh, those are three top three lines for, for Rolex. Um, we've whittled it down to one king for each of those lines, uh, but we will discuss some other models in there as well. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with the Submariner and that's at number three in our top three selection. Uh, that Submariner used to be much higher than it is now, um, but there's a couple of reasons why it's at number three and we'll come onto that a little bit later on. In terms of steel models, that's what we're gonna focus our, our attention on now today. Obviously this is a steel sports watch video. Um, I'd say that just looking outside the steel models, the next most popular really is the bimetal uh, blues E, which is the bimetal steel and yellow gold with the blue dial and blue uh, bezel. That's an incredibly popular watch and has become much more so within the last month or two. We've seen much more attention on that watch, many more requests for that watch and, and orders for that piece. Um, rather than a few years ago, you know, it, it was less popular, still quite a popular model, but we've seen more attention now on the, on the steel and gold versions or variants. In fact, we've seen that across all the board. I think that's probably because the steel prices are becoming quite expensive now, um, that they're actually lining up more similarly with the bimetal prices. Uh, so people would rather get some, um, you know, gold in there for the same price. So the most sought of after of all the models is the Hulk, the green dial um, and green bezel steel Submariner in terms of the steel models. Um, and actually I think in the whole Submariner line it's the most sought after of all of them. Uh, the most popular for us, the most ordered and the most requested and the most inquired about is the steel black Submariner with the date window, uh, so the steel date, um, black date sub uh, 116610LN. Uh, that's the most requested watch we really have um, from Rolex. Lots and lots of people are after this watch. Um, in terms of investment, I think the Hulk is probably by far the best of all the models in the Submariner line. Having said that though, we've seen that the prices slow down a little bit on the Hulk recently, and in fact, lots of other investment watches from Rolex as well, has, the prices have softened a little bit. Uh, they haven't been growing quite as much as they have been before. I don't know if that's just here in the UK because of Brexit coming at the end of the month um, in a couple of weeks time. And that's kind of made a little bit or caused a little bit of uncertainty in the industry. Uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if you guys are finding that wherever else you are in the world. Um, so what do our clients like about the Submariner? Uh, there's quite a few things that our clients love about the Submariner and each client is different. Um, the general consensus though is that they love the fact that it's such a solid watch and it's a fantastic everyday wearer as well. Uh, we've got clients who wear this piece every day that are in construction, um, that are you know, architecture, um, that are in the city working in the banks. There's such a wide range of, of clients that own this watch from us um, and they, the Samarina fits into their lives, every single one of their lives perfectly. And I think that's really credit to its real rugged design, the fact that someone in construction can wear it, someone with an active lifestyle can wear that piece and it doesn't matter if it gets dinked. It definitely is a really solid watch. I'd say it's much more so than a lot of the other models in the collection. If you're looking for something that you can kind of batter around a bit, then the Samarina is a fantastic option. Um, the green Samarina, the Hulk, we find Clients really love that watch because it's quite unique. Uh, you don't often see a green watch you know, with a green bezel. You do sometimes see green dials from Rolex, but quite rare that you actually see um, you know, a, a watch with a green dial and a green bezel in combination. So it definitely is a unique piece. Every time you show someone that doesn't really know that much about watches, 
uh, the Hulk there kind of find it really intriguing and interesting. Uh, you know, you tell them the story about the Hulk, you're being called the Hulk and the Batman, and it's kind of quite a nice little conversation starter. Reasons why people tend to go for Hulk, if they can, over the black one, is because the Black Samaritan is one of the most common Rolexes you'll see. If you're gonna buy any Rolex and worry about seeing someone else wearing the same watch as you, then try and avoid the Submariner because it is pretty likely you'll see many people wearing the same watch as you. Um, another reason clients love this watch is it's an icon. Um, it's truly one of the most iconic watches in the industry uh, and for, Submar for Rolex, sorry, it's one of the most important models in their whole collection. I can't ever see it ever going out of their collection or I don't think they'll ever replace it with anything else. Um, yeah, fantastic piece and an icon, like I said. Uh, Solid investment as well because of the fact it's such an icon and has been around for almost 70 years now. Um, I think depending on which one you go for is you know, whether or not you'll get more or less for your money in, in the long term in increasing in value. Uh, there is debate at the moment that the Hulk will be discontinued next year at Basel 2020, uh, which will of course spike the prices of that watch. I'm not so sure how true that is, uh, but let's see. You know, there's rumors every single year that something's being discontinued, so let's, let's see what happens to it. Um, another reason why our clients love the Submariner is the matte finish bracelet. Uh, they find it a little bit more understated, not quite as blingy as some other models like the GMT Master, for example. Um, something that's quite sweet about the Submariner with lots of our clients is the fact it's often their first watch, um, their first proper Rolex or, or you know, Swiss watch. Uh, they tend to go for the Submariner first and actually those clients tend to keep that watch forever because it is a real special piece for them. Um, it's often the watch they pass down to their sons or daughters or whoever. Uh, and yeah, so I think it holds a, a special feeling for a lot of our clients, their Submariners. Uh, definitely those clients that wear them every single day, I cannot imagine them selling those watches ever. So what do I like about the Submariner? Um, I absolutely love the Submariner. I've owned in fact, all three of the ones that we've mentioned or that we're looking at in the steel collection, the no date, the date and date black and the date green. Um, and I've loved every single one of them. I think they are fantastic everyday wearers and that's what I really loved about them the most. They really, I never was worried about it being too delicate or getting damaged. I just wore it to death and, and really loved it. Um, I started with the date black, then I went to the date green and then I finished on the no date sub. And the no date sub was my favorite of all three of them. I love the Hulk. I love the, the sunburst effect on that green dial. I think that's really beautiful. And, and that made it a bit more unique for me. And I actually liked the fact that, that I never really saw anyone else with a Hulk, um, you know, in public, obviously in the watch world, you see lots of people with that watch, but uh, in public, it was quite rare for me to see someone with that green Submariner. Um, the no date, however, is actually even rarer to see someone wearing. And that's why I went onto that watch after. I actually preferred the simplicity of that watch with no date and, and no cyclops. Um, I just much preferred the more symmetrical, cleaner design of that piece and that's why I ended up buying the no date instead. And so to conclude the Samaritan uh, section of this video, um, the Hulk is our king of the Samaritan line um, because of its popularity with our clients and, and popularity with us and also the fact it is just a nice unique looking Samaritan uh, and we, it's our most sought after Samaritan that, that we sell. Okay, so that's it for the Submariner. Moving on to number two now. Um, we have our uh, GMT Master 2 at number two. Now this is a unique model, a uh, unique um, setup, sorry, with number three being the Submariner, and number two being the GMT Master. Usually it's the other way around, uh, but because in recent times we've seen within the last year or two, um, a lot more interest in the GMT Master line than we ever have done before. And I think that's because Rolex has revamped the whole collection for the GMT Master. They've got rid of all the steel models and replaced them with new models. Um, they've replaced all the gold models and replaced them with new rose gold bimetal options. They replaced the white gold. They just revamped the whole collection and uh, they've really changed up the looks of that watch completely. And I think that's why it's getting so much more attention now. Just quickly touching on the gold models, since they've got rid of the yellow gold models, um, the rose gold, like the root beer, the steel and yellow, uh, steel and rose gold uh, root beer, and then the full rose gold um, root beer is actually a really popular model now for us. Definitely the bimetal being incredibly popular. Um, it's actually a really beautiful looking timepiece and the old yellow gold versions were not so popular at all. So definitely seen a lot more attention in not just the steel areas of the collection, but also in the rose gold as well. So we've definitely found that the steel models in the GMT Master line have stolen a bit of the limelight from the Submariner collection. I think because relative to the GMT line, the Submariner is quite a boring looking collection now. The only, only watch that's unique in the steel collection for the Submariner is the green uh, Hulk. 
um, whereas your Pepsi and your Batman have got different looking bezels. You also had the old version of the Batman as well on the Oyster bracelet. Um, so there's a few more interesting looks um, and obviously the addition of the Jubilee bracelet makes it look totally different. I say Batmans have done very well. I'd say they've slowed down a little bit in, in sales recently, um, but they still remain quite popular models. So for us, the Pepsi really is the king of the GMT Master line. Um, a couple of reasons why that is, but really the main reason for us is it's very popular with us at the moment, um, but also the fact that it is true to the original GMT Master they released back in the 1950s. Let's look at some reasons why our clients love the GMT Master 2. Um, probably the main reason and what we find quite often with the clients that buy in the GMT Master 2 are that they travel a lot. Uh, we have lots of clients that own day dates and, and other more dressy watches and Patek Philippe's that will buy a GMT Master 2 from Rolex um, that they take on their travel holidays, you know, travel work business holidays and, and things like that. Um, whenever they're traveling, they're taking their GMT Master. And they also don't mind the fact that that watch can be battered around a little bit more so than some of their more delicate watches in their collections. Um, so it's actually incredibly common that we see that watch being bought just to travel with. I know lots of people think it's pointless when you can just use your phone and do some simple maths in your head, but they're still definitely with our clients, um, they're finding that that's still a really nice sort of ritual to do when you're going away on holiday on the flight or whatever to change your, your times on your watch, change your DMT hand um, and actually use the watch for what it was meant for. We also find that some clients um, prefer the GMT Master over the Submariner collection because it is much more dressy. It's got a uh, polished center link on, on the steel models um, and obviously the steel models now feature Jubilee bracelets which totally changes the look of the watch makes it much more dressy than the Submariner line which is still featuring that brushed finish uh, much more utilitarian feeling dive watch um, uh, whereas the GMT Master has got a little bit more of a um, elegant classiness to it a definitely more expensive feel than the Submariner does. Another reason why we're finding clients starting to look at the GMT Master collection rather than the Submariner collection is actually because they're finding that the GMT line is a bit more unique looking. The Submariner is a very um, standard looking watch and it's copied so much across the industry by other smaller companies that that sometimes puts people off. Uh, whereas the GMT Master definitely looks unique and different to all those other watches that are copied out there. Um, that Jubilee bracelet definitely helps that massively and has completely changed the look of that piece. And then finally, I'd say actually a lot of our clients that own the GMT Master uh, Pepsi have really loved that watch and, and bought that watch up really quickly from us because it's true to the original Pepsi that they released with that Pepsi bezel. Um, on to whether or not I would own this watch and what I think about the GMT Master line. Uh, personally, I much prefer the Submariner collection. A few reasons for that is because um, I prefer the matte finish of the bracelets on those watches. I prefer the more understated style. I prefer the more understated bezel on those watches with the smaller numbers. It just overall is a much cleaner watch in my opinion and, and much more understated in general. Um, I'm not a major fan of the Jubilee bracelet because it is very blingy and shiny and detailed and catches a lot of attention. I prefer, I prefer much more understated pieces and that's why I always wore my Submariners anyway on, on a strap. One thing that I might say though, um, that I personally find, and sometimes uh, we also find this at Bijou as well, uh, that the GMT at the moment, the GMT Master Collection is quite trend driven and fashion driven. Um, the, because they are, it's a Pepsi or a Batman at the moment, which are both selling for over list price, uh, massively over list price, and they're kind of trendy fashion watches. Um, it means that it's in a slight bubble. It never used to be this popular, the GMT Master Collection. Um, so it's hard to tell if it will continue going up like it is going now. The Submariner has been the same pretty much since the 50s. So, you know, you can kind of bet on that that Submariner will not change really in price at all. Uh, those black Submariners will remain, you know, increasing in value very slowly, very, but very surely as well. Okay, now on to the Daytona, which is at our number one spot in our king of Rolex um, sports watches, um, steel sports watches. Um, I'm sure it's not a surprise to anyone that the Daytona is at the top for us for steel sports watches. I think probably it would reach the top position even for steel sports watches in the whole industry, um, you know, any brand. It's always been a popular model of the steel Daytona and has been actually since the 80s. So uh, it's had a waiting list for a long, long time as well. Been a pretty difficult watch to find and now it's almost impossible to find at you know, retail price in a boutique. Um, it speaks for itself, you know, history, um, for the Daytona is rich and you know it's rich in history the Daytona 
it really is one of the most iconic watches ever made and probably is the most important watch that Rolex has ever created. You know, just to put this in context, how popular and how desperate people are to buy this, the Daytona in steel. Um, we spoke to a boutique in, just outside of London the other day and they had a waiting list of 950 people for a steel Daytona and they receive about two or three a year. So that's over 300 year waiting list for this watch. Um, most places will shut down their waiting list after it gets to about 10 or 12 years. Um, so there's an exceptional amount of people looking to buy this watch. In terms of investment, the steel Daytona is definitely the best Rolex for investment um, and probably the most, in fact, one of the best investment watches you can buy out there from any brand. Um, the bubble that it's in now, if you want to call it bubble, you know, is massively trading over its list price. Not nowhere near as much as something like an Aquanaut or um, a Nautilus from Patek Philippe. You know, I think it's still held down a little bit more and, and it definitely doesn't feel like it's on too much of a bubble like those other watches. I can see that the Daytona will just keep going and going and going. I don't see it going down any time soon. So uh, yeah, in fact, I don't ever see it going down. So in terms of investment, which is the best model, uh, the white dial steel Daytona is the best one for investment that tends to trade for a little bit more than the black dial. So let's have a look at what our clients love about the Daytona. They love the everyday wearability of the Daytona, the fact it is incredibly versatile. It suits pretty much any occasion and pretty much any outfit. Um, they also love the fact that it is the ultimate in, in versatility. Um, you know, the smaller case size and, and the brush bracelet means it can look really smart as well as looking more casual when you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt. I'd say that they find in general that it's more suitable for any occasion than the GMT Master and the Submariner. Uh, I definitely think it's the most versatile in the Rolex collection. Um, the client, our clients love the history of the Daytona as well. They also love the history of the people that have worn it as well over the years, like Paul Newman, um, you know, and also Paul Newman's watch selling recently. Uh, they love to buy into that history of, of, of Rolex. Um, they also love the fact that it's the king of Rolex. Uh, that definitely is regarded across the industry as probably the ultimate Rolex, the steel Daytona. Um, they also love the fact that it's an understated watch. And that's something that I really, really want to press on the, uh, and make as clear as possible. A lot of our clients that own this watch want it because, or want to buy that piece because of its understated style. Um, definitely under the radar. And that's what they call this watch is a real stealth wealth watch. Obviously, they love the fact that it's an incredible investment piece. Um, the type of watch, really, that our clients seem to keep forever. Every single one of our clients that's bought Steel Daytona from us has never sold it back to us or sold it on after. Uh, every single one of them has kept it. And I think that really says a lot because nowadays, lots and lots of our clients are switching and changing their watches all the time. Um, but none of our clients that buy the Steel Daytona sell it back to us after. So what do I love about the Daytona? Um, I absolutely love this piece. For me, it's by far the king of Rolex. I think it's just a fantastic watch and it speaks for itself. It's history, you know, it's extensive waiting list, uh, you know, 950 people in one boutique that spans over 300 and a bit years. That's just incredible. Uh, any watch that has that level of waiting list kind of speaks for itself. Um, I like both the black and the white dials. I think, you know, Tuesday I'd prefer the black dial, Wednesday I'd prefer the white dial. I think it's really hard to decide between the two of them. Um, I love the history of them. I love, um, you know, the different people that have worn them over the years. Uh, I just think it's a really cool watch. Probably the most thing I love about the, the Daytona though is the fact it has a smaller case size. Um, and for me, that's always what I'm looking for in a watch, something a bit more classic, um, a little bit more elegant, and definitely the Daytona is that. I owned a bimetal Daytona steel and yellow gold and I absolutely loved that watch. I wore it every single day and I wore it on a strap. Um, I love the shape and size of the Daytona. I think it's just a beautiful looking watch uh, and by far is the king of Rolex for me. Definitely in the steel uh, models, we've chosen the white one to be our king of all the um, de Rolexes sorry, in the collection, uh, the white dial steel Daytona. Um, but I do also love the black dial. Um, but we've just found the white dial a bit more popular for us and a little bit more sought after and trading for a little bit higher price, which is why we've given, given it the king position. 
Thanks guys for watching. Let us know in the comments which model you love the most of all of those uh, that we mentioned. Maybe you think that I should have included a different line instead of the Submarine or the GMT or the Daytona. And as always, if you're interested in any of the watches mentioned during this video, then don't hesitate to contact us. Our details are at the end of the video and also in the description. It'd be a pleasure to call any of these watches into stock for you. Yeah.